some people I feel like either blur it or they separate it. Like I have a friend who's um she's an actress turned uh well she's an actress slash V singer. Um, mm. she specifically does like singing, but she also does acting as like another thing. Um, and her like persona kinda correlates with her, but she kinda tells the difference between it. Um, and she makes like that huge difference that yeah, I'm an actress that became a VTuber kind of thing. Um, so like again, some people do that, some people don't. I Welcome oh, to Metaverse man. Gen. I'm lying. I'm old man raptor and we got one hell of a guest today, and that is Hello everybody, I'm Pen the Elf. Or you just call me Pen. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us, Pen. It's a pleasure to sit down and meet you. Yeah. Um, how did you get in VR? Yes, it is. And what you do and what are you known for? Okay, so I got into VR about well, I wanted to get kind of into VR, but I had to save up for a headset. Um I actually been streaming for about two years, over two years now on Twitch. And my friends did a little bit of VR like stuff and I was interested in it, but it, I was like, oh, I feel like I should just get a headset. At the time I was like, I didn't know the, about the desktop version or anything. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to save it for a headset and just, you know, dive into it with no expectations whatsoever. So I just like went in, did whatever, started uh, meeting. Um, well, I was more into the Suica world mm. actually, that because I love playing Suica. Um, I'm more of a gamer on Twitch. I like to play a, different types of games, though FPS games is not my specialty. I just play any games I can get my hands on that I'm like, okay, I can play this. But so I got into Suica, met few people, got to like know all sorts of people, and then one of my uh, streamer friends, uh, she started getting to VR chat, and I was already like three months into the uh, into VR chat, and mm. then after that, I started getting more into clubbing and raves and meeting all sorts of people. Oh wow! So that's a lot of information. <laughs> no, it it's a okay. I have a lot of questions. I did see in like your bio and your in your socials you do VTubing. Is that the kind of streaming you do, or do you do yeah. something a little different? Yes, just just VTubing. I also besides the games, I also like singing. Um, way before I became a VTuber, I was quite into um, the K-pop community, and so that was like my little like taste in like making content kind of and people kind of knew me before on twitter like i was really a big fan of a particular group and uh over time like well after they disbanded then i started getting into twitch and then i met other people in that community um actually it was funny i got into twitch because of k-pop actually and also Ooh. another person that does true crime um, but basically, through their communities, they like w were saying, "Hey, Pen, you should try to stream. You have a great voice, a personality." And like, I was like, "Okay." At the time, I had a laptop, and I was like, "Okay, I'll just try my best." And just through meeting people and everything, they were like, "Hey, I want to support you. You should get a lat, like a better lat, like a sorry, better PC, get better stuff to stream." And like, before I knew it, here I am with like a PC VR setup. <laughs> <laughs> and everything and you know i also have hand tracking that i got not too long ago from the leap motion 2 so, mm. so i can move my hands as well so um yeah it's just it's been a great journey just in two Ooh, years what i've done so it yeah. sounds it so question for you why vtubing over traditional streaming like with a camera on you um it was really funny. The first joke that my friends ever did was, hey, you kind of sound like Ono Crony from Hollow Live. You should be a VTuber instead. And I'm, I'm also subconscious about what I look like as a person mm -hmm. and stuff. So it kind of worked out that, hey, you're into anime, you're into K-pop, you're into all this stuff. You should try VTubing and everything like that. So yeah. Sorry if you're going to hear uh, noises in the back. My brothers are coming home. Mm. So if you hear noises and stuff and my brothers, I do apologize. That's, that's -okay. interesting. This always happens also in my stream too. So yeah. Hey, that's okay. I can yell at him from down here. They'll hear me and screaming at him. Go keep it down. Yeah. Uh, oh. I, I don't think I told them I'm doing an interview, so this is going to be quite interesting. Oh, the, yeah. really interesting. Ooh, this would be great. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Ready for the hammer, folks. Just wait for the best. It might just happen. So. For when you first got into VTubing, what has this experience like been for you, and how do you feel doing it two years later? Um, well, let's see. So, like, I actually started as a PNG tuber because, again, I had a crappy laptop, and one of my friends was like, "Oh, you have a Switch? 
like a Nintendo Switch, so, you know, you should, you know, try that first and, like, see what happens. So then I just, you know, I bought someone um, that, uh, like, an artist I found on t- uh, Twitter had, like, like, PNGs and stuff, and so I started that out, and then my friend, who was a streamer, that always played, uh, actually, one of the first games I did start streaming was Dead by Daylight, mm-hmm. and so I have met her because of that, and she was like, here, here's, like, a capture card, I have an extra one, you should try it, like, see how you feel about streaming with, you know, Nintendo Switch, and then, at the time, because, again, it was a laptop, um, I didn't really have, like, a monitor, so I had to use, like, an old, like, small TV display as my second monitor. So I had a really, really, uh, oh, there's my brothers. That's so loud! You're waking the dead over here! <laughs> I'm doing an interview, by the way, so you know. Um, okay, sorry. Oh, you're, <laughs> oh, you're fine, good. you're I fine. Myself for God, they, the door. I can't yell oh, at him. Oh, you're good, bro. You're good. You're good. Uh, hey, it's okay, bro. We'll just pull you in here. No big deal. We'll add you to the list. <laughs> no, they've, actually, they've been on my streams before. Uh, I had a moment where um, my brother, I have a twin brother, he was imitating my voice when we got back from eating oh my, lunch and stuff. Oh, my God. So I have a clip oh my of that, God. yeah. yeah. Oh boy. I have brothers. Mm. Yeah. Anything you heard? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, damn, he left. I can't pick on him. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Why VTubing over regular streaming? Um, VTubing, just, again, it is just like, I guess it was, I was like, huh, I I just felt like it was me just because, you know, growing up mm. as an anime nerd and stuff. I felt like it was me. But the funny thing is, most of my friends, when I started streaming, a lot of them were flesh tubers, I should say, or like people who had face cams. So it was really interesting. And, um at the time because they're like oh we kind of knew what vtubing was and the same person like that i said that uh basically uh joked that i sound like crony um he was also trying to prove to me hey you can be a vtuber with like not a lot of like resources you don't have to like get like a fancy model like right now i'm using a viewer model that i just put together like i bought assets and just was like here's here's pen um and stuff so basically you know, he taught me, like, hey, you can do this stuff. And then over time, when I met more people, then I was able to get, like, more blend shapes on my face, um, different kind of things, you know, different programs where basically everybody can, like, eat my body. So, like, people like mm. to do that. They like to, like, throw my body around or, like, throw stuff at me. So I thought VTubing was a, a very as much interactive as, like, you know, being a face cam streamer. So I thought it was just more interesting to do that instead of, like, you know, face cam and everything. And also... When you have family, like, walking around, like I said, and you, you hear the noises, right? It'd be just funny if they just come back, like, I don't want them to come back, like, in the, you know, in the camera and stuff. So it's just much easier, you know? Also the privacy, too, honestly. It's nice to have that privacy mm. and everything. Sorry if you hear the door slam. Doesn't sound like you got privacy. Sounds like they're coming and going and coming back just it's to get... Oh, room. shit, I forgot. I, I forgot this. Oh, that's fine. I'm just picking on you just slightly. <laughs> I got a question for her, Lion. I got a question for her. Since you started with your headgear and everything else like this, what was the weirdest thing you saw when you came in the VR for the very first time? Uh, I got to think about that. Well, the thing is, I didn't really get into, like, the more, you know, crazier things till much later in the rave scene, honestly. I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't get the crate like the craziest things mm. um, at first. So I was more of like I was always in the chill worlds and everything. So I never really saw anything crazy and weird in the beginning. Um, but I feel like that was good that I didn't see anything <laughs> crazy <laughs> um, at first. <laughs> but um, one of my good friends, okay, the most weirdest thing out of pocket thing I never like I didn't think I'd ever see this, but I honestly it's not surprising. One of my friends, um, he has basically like, like a an actual okay, I don't his like penis can like shoot stuff, like all sorts of things and everything. So that was the most recent thing that I never thought I'd ever see for real. Like, he can shoot a bunch of things. Sue me, this is for you, man. I'm calling you out here. <laughs> he can like, shoot all these things um out of it. Yeah. Every- yeah. It sounds like something that somebody else I know in this room, but we won't mention names. But it, you <laughs> may, I, I can imagine go, hey, you got to check this yeah. out. Look at the, what I got. Yeah. It'd be like going yeah. to a candy can, store going, I got the best sucker. Cool, here's a cool thing. He can go like Ken, Ma- Ken 
mo uh, Ken doll mode. So basically, he can he, oh, he can take off his pants, <laughs> but he doesn't, and then oh he doesn't God. have anything. So he's really yeah, he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. So this is for you, man. <laughs> oh wow. Um, so from oh shoot, do you, do you guys? Oh shoot, sorry if you hear. Dang, my brother, I think, is doing lawn mowing work now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No so big you deal. you hear that noise, I'm sorry. Well, hey, Lion, look at now. We actually got broadcasting and how to properly mow your front yard. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have an interesting podcast today. You're like, dang, this girl has like a lot of things happening. Oh, it's okay. Oh, things happen. Gosh. Life happens, so it's no big deal. What okay. has been... Nothing. Has your... Ex Experience in VR helps you with your VTubing and all mask, or do you like want to keep things separated? Um, I feel like at this point it kind of is like blurring the lines as of now. Mm. Um, especially because I know a lot of VRC like streamers, and I always hang out with uh, a few of them too, and I'm on their streams and I mod for them. So like, it's kind of blurring the lines now. Um, for me, it's not really separate. But it's funny because, like, sometimes you'll bring up stories on my stream about, like, what's happened in VR chat, and everyone's like, that's interesting, I would love to be part of that. And, like, it just gets more people into this space more, which is kind of cool. And, um, you know, it's more personal, I feel like, because, you know, I feel like I'm sitting in a room with you two, even though we're in a space full of zeros and ones and colors and whatever. But, like, it brings people together um regardless of where you come from which i think is really nice about mm. vr chat and i think the same thing in twitch but i feel like again it's more personal here because you know we feel like we're sitting together you know we're chilling mm. together mm. so uh, another one for a line shoot has anything in vr mm -hmm. v vr helped you in the real world since mm. you started you can also loop in uh, I thought streaming of one, too. but I feel like I shouldn't talk about that more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it to the imagination. Um, you imagination. got it, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> imagination. Oh, boy. You know, I, just, I honestly feel like, though, okay, I do have an answer besides that really mysterious answer, the other one. Mm. Um, I feel like it kind of helped me be more open and more like balancing on a lot of things yes i'm here all the time but it's made me kind of like look forward to being here and like kind of also cherishing like how i am irl mm. um and everything because i feel like my person kind of blends in kind of here but i'm more reserved and like not as open real life and so this space allows me to express myself as much as i am with i'm you know streaming and everything mm. um so i found that this place kind of helped me grow as a person and express myself in different ways i never thought i would okay i have another weird question kind of looping into like blurring lines between vr and vtubing what are the communities like between what you would normally experience in the vtubing community compared to like vr streamer community Ooh, okay, that's a good question. Um, let's see. Um, I find that... Let's see, I feel like a lot of the VTubing community has its own niches. This is the same with VRC. And sometimes they connect, sometimes they don't. Like, I find, like, a lot of the VRC people that I know are, like, dancers. Actually, a lot of people I know, especially in the club, you know, rave scene. I know a lot of them that are into the clubbing and everything, but I found that the people that, um, you know, like, VTube regularly are, like, a lot of them are gamers in general mm -hmm. um, and everything like that. I just happened just to be like, yeah, I'm a gamer. I wanted to try something different and, like, said, okay, there's games on VR chat. So that's how I kind of started was there's games, there's place to hang out. Um, and I didn't expect that whole, like, you know, club rave scene with VRU ever, actually, until my friend, like I said, um, I'll, I'll shout her out, Lyrical Panther, uh, she started getting into, like, you know, under wanting to understand, like, VR chat, and, like, one of the first people that introduced her was, like, a dancer as well on here, and so, you know, she was already into club and raving's IRL, but that kind of bridged her to go, you know, into doing, um, 
you know, VR chat content and everything. And uh, now she uh, like it made her own little club, and I actually ended up becoming a host for that club too. So. Yeah. Oh wow. So. So, so I feel like it's blurring the lines because of interests. Yeah. I find. Okay. Yes. Um. So one thing I've heard for some people I know here in VR chat and who's some VTubers is that there are some VTubers who like won't tell you they've been in VR chat or know it, and there are some who do. I haven't. I understand the VR chat's a bit of a wild thing, but what is the VR, the VTube community's thoughts on this side of the internet? May I ask? Oh, I feel like I don't. Oh, that's. Mm, I think it's because they've heard some of the wildest things that people do on here. I think. Mm. I think that's what's kind of like you know. Um, I wish I kind of could give a proper answer on that, honestly. Well, that's because, okay. Um, yeah, like I feel like I'm in the VTuber community, but like because of like how you know the friends i have that are also not vtubers like i'm kind of in the mix mash of everything um so like i know people who are regular streamers and then like you know the vrc content creators and the vtubing and like i feel like i'm kind of in the middle of it because of just who i know but um i have been trying to get like other vtuber friends who don't have a headset like hey you can still try it regardless um you know experience it even though it's less immersive it doesn't matter you could just try it you know and i always tell people just to try things once and see how they feel about it um but yeah i don't i wish i had a proper answer for that i wish i did actually about you know people's thoughts on it but i feel like people just always again hear the wildest stuff and then people mm. don't touch it because they are either scared of like what they'll do. Like I'll be honest, when I first started streaming on VR chat, I was a little nervous, especially going to public lobbies because they people would say things or anything like that, and I was always afraid, you know, if something TOS would come up um, mm. and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay. So let's loop into what was some of your first experiences VTubing like, and what were your expectations going into it? Um. So when I started VTubing, like I said, I was into, I did PNG tubing. Um, I did not expect when I first started how much like equipment I would have to acquire just to simply VTube. Um, like I had to acquire, like I said, it, it took an iPhone, it took a freaking Leap Motion programs and having a better computer to run everything, especially, um, you know, especially as a 3D um vtuber um like i didn't realize when i first started that you would need so much stuff and like if you want games running in the back you also need a better computer and stuff so that was like the first experience was me just trying to realize this is a lot of work to be a vtuber and then my friends would make the make the correlation like that do uh do face cam they're like it's like you got you guys putting on makeup just making sure everything is good the lighting's great and everything and it's kind of similar to that and um yeah and like i said i didn't really meet a lot of uh when i first started like i said um most of my friends weren't uh vtubers so i was kind of like one that one person or a little friend like a streamer friend group that was starting to become one and over time they kind of got more interested and more people you know kind of gathered from vtubing and people who don't and like into one space and everyone got to know each other and it was like that whole like you know clash of it and it was really beautiful to to you know see that community grow and mm. kind of learn from each other because a lot of the even though oh yeah we're you know anime people on the internet as they say uh that that kind of mesh together well with some things they can do that we can do and some things you know that we do specifically they can also try it too as well mm -hmm. so you know it was kind of great to kind of see that kind of community build up together from that hmm okay so what were some of the learning curves that you had to work through starting out that you're able to overcome and what were some of those solutions um again the programs that you have to download like uh i started using vinya not too long ago which is like a basically a program where you know like it's the one that i can basically get yeeted off like where i'm standing or whatever and stuff like that or getting hit by things and um i didn't realize that you had to like set up these node things which is also similar to like anything in unity that you have to do like animations and stuff mm -hmm. but like i didn't realize that you had to program that 
stuff and make sure everything's working. You have to have like your IP address or whatever to connect certain specific things. And like, it was just the learning curve of realizing that you have all these like different equipment that you have to do and then um, finding either people or resources to help you understand it. And YouTube was definitely a big, you know, help for that. Also, a bunch of friends that already started VTubing was like, hey, I can help you out, no free of charge. And just, again, the sense of community is very nice. People are willing to help you out. And, you know, it's a great also way to network with other people and just getting to know more people in a more personal space as well. Hmm, okay. So I can say from like the VR side of things, the community is very welcome to like come on and collaborate and stuff. Is the VTube community similar or is it different, like interacting with like, different? content creators I, in the scene i think uh a lot of the people other people i've met are on twitter um sometimes either through word of mouth through friends i would say it's pretty much kind of almost similar it's just more harder to get to know more people on like for example just twitter uh, mm. unless you come up and say hey can i collab with you on a game or whatever um and I find that I think it's a little harder just because it's not very personal. Like, like I said before, in VR chat, it's more personal. Like, if you see that person online, you can just come up to them and say, hey, you know, can we, like, talk about a possible collab or whatever? Um, but there is that similarity, again, to reach out to people. Like, you could easily probably reach out to people. It's just more personal in this space because, um, you know, you're it seems mm -hmm. like you're physically talking to them instead of through DMs and stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Have you found it easy to break into the VTuber community from where you are, where you started to now, to like be able to get those collabs as a VTuber? Yeah, I think so. Like I said, like meeting people through other people has been, um, honestly, I'll say that is my, definitely my biggest strength as a streamer is networking. Um, that's what people told me. It's definitely one of the harder skills to get, but I've been fortunate that when people like are like oh hey i know pen or like hey pen i know this person you can talk to they're cool and everything and um you know that has been i've been fortunate that i have people that look out for me and i have people that i look out for that i'm like hey you should meet and collab and so it's been like a very cool thing to see like friendships form and communities growing because of that mm, okay so another question for you is what have been some of your favorite highlights being a vtuber like during your last couple years as, as like in, a, in in the ooh okay so something that happened recently for me that I've I never thought would ever happen was uh, a developer company uh, Maximum and Entertainment um, company hmm. they reached out to me on uh, Twitter and I played their demo for an indie game called Until Then and that takes place in the Philippines like the story and everything and I'm Filipino I'm Filipino American very proud of that um karaoke runs in my veins <laughs> um basically uh, and so that game takes place in the philippines and they reached out to me and said hey like would you want to play the demo again and like kind of showcase this indie game again and you'll be like part of the uh like steam page and everything and that was like a highlight for me because i'm like again um you know it's me representing myself as like a gamer a streamer but also representing like the country i came from you know and it made me really proud of that um so that was definitely a highlight for me this year i'm trying to think what else would be um besides you know getting into vr chat like not too long ago in december um i gotta think what's been a highlight of mine that is not recent i'm trying to think um hmm. My memory gets fuzzy sometimes. It's a okay. <laughs> Trust me, I understand yeah. that. I'll think about it more. It's, but that's definitely okay. a highlight <laughs> as a recent. Yeah. So, so with uh, you worked with the, that indie company in order to get that to uh, a demo for the game out. What was mm -hmm. the game like, and yeah. what was the interaction with the company for you as a VTuber? Um, they just reached. They just reached out on on Twitter and messaged me and said, "Hey, like we saw your demo from the last time. Will you be play, willing to play it again?" Um, and stuff and they actually clipped one of my um so i actually how i got that opportunity to play the demo at first the first time was uh through a place called lurk it and lurk it looks at how many like viewers you have the average and like your followers and like they will literally be like hey uh here's these games you can pick from that you might be interested playing in and 
companies can also go through that website and pick out people that they're like, oh yeah, this person played this demo before or of this game. They might be a good fit for that. And like, they'll send invites and like, you have like an opportunity to like go through those or like, you know, be like, hey, I don't want to do this game or whatever and like requests and stuff. And so that's how I basically uh, got into that game specifically was because of Lurk It. Mm. Um, they just found me and or they... I found the game, I think, and I was like, oh, it takes place in the Philippines. I'm going to go and request, you know, code. And, like, they looked through my stuff and said, hey, well, we would love you to try it. And that's how, basically, I got into that opportunity. And because of that opportunity, they gave me to that other next opportunity. And, yeah. Okay. On another... It's getting loud. <laughs> On another random more. question I have for you. What is your relationship with chat like? And does your audience have any expectations of you as a, as a VTuber? <laughs> I think I think the first thing they always think of is just how friendly I am. Like they always expect me to like, you know, just be friendly and talk a lot and also try to be as wholesome as possible. Though there's times where, especially as of late, and I blame this place, I would say VR chat may be more of a degenerate now. <laughs> um, <laughs> that like, uh, yes, would you agree? <laughs> um, I don't know what you're talking about. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll call your name. The what? name of the podcast. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, like people would always be like, "Oh yeah, she's very." One of the VTuber terms is "say so." Have you heard hmm. of that? Yeah. So like everyone's like, "Oh, Pen's so pure and friendly," and then sometimes I just make those offhand comments every now and then, um, and everyone's like dang, Pen, I didn't know you had that side. And it's really funny uh, when I bring that up a little bit. Um, mm. People like it when Mommy Pen comes out. Yes, that is a, a fan favorite besides Uwu Pen. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So you have different personalities you react with chat with, Mask? Yeah, it depends on what people want at the time. Seems like people really want that mommy pen sometimes. They really do. They like the Ada Adas. <laughs> oh, I always joke around. I started VTubing because of an Ada Ada. Um, I have oh. a story where a friend of mine who's a, a, a face cam streamer, he was like, he reacted to my Ara Ara. It was Ara Ara Stupid. Um, that which is very iconic everyone loves that from me that, that's my one of my uh, favorite sound bits that i ever made and people love it um and it i he basically asked me hey pen like can you like make some like make uh can you make custom ones for me instead of saying rr stupid it's something else or like rr senpai whatever and like i r recorded really quickly gave it to him and he's like here's the 20 bucks for that and i was like that's the easiest 20 bucks ever for me <laughs> <laughs> just was our hours and i would joke around it was started with our hours so yeah <laughs> oh uh, hmm so as it is it when you do your v vtubing career do you uh normally focus on the games more or do you focus on doing this chat because i've i've never done the streaming portion mm -hmm. of any content most of it yeah. we, what we've done is mm -hmm. recording and podcast not what you do recording mm. um i focus more on the games but uh just because like for me i find that a lot of my chatters like to lurk and watch me they like they just mm. like to watch me just do my own thing actually which is uh which is fine with me sometimes i'm like oh i wish people could talk more but i understand if like i'm very cozy that's what people say to me they're like oh pen you're so cozy i'll just sit there and watch you um and so support you and stuff um but yeah i tend to try to focus more on the game but also if some people say things i try to like go back and chat and like have a comment about it or make a joke about it uh mm. sometimes when chat gets a chance they like to bully and tease me which i feel like is very common you know, as a streamer, you know, even the mods look at part of it and they're like, yeah, well, let's bully the streamer. Um, <laughs> but uh, usually I try to be very, like, cozy and just, you know, have a safe space for everyone to, like, you know, chill and relax when I stream. I try my best to give that. Um, you know, it's it's our way to kind of, like, relax and not think about, you know, the world for, you know, for a bit and everything. Um, and so, and I feel the same thing about here too. It allows me to come in here and just be somebody different and try other things. And, you know, I feel the same thing here. It's more personal here, like I said. Mm. So I have another more interesting question. You as Pen the Elf as a VTuber, are you being yourself or are you being a character? Mm -hmm. And if you're a character, are you able to Ooh. be yourself? Or do they, does your audience want you to That's be the a... character? 
Ooh. I think it's get, again going with blurring with the lines. Actually, I try to give Pen most like of my, of who I am that I can express as much as I can. Um, the reason why actually I chose the name Pen, um, which is just like a shorthand name, but her so my character my. A character comes from my first ever D and D character that I ever made. Actually, hmm. um, depends on what elf rogue. That's what I am. I know it doesn't seem like I am. I don't have any, any weapons at the moment. But um, I always like to say that I'm a retired mercenary as a joke. Um, but uh, basically, like Pen's, her name comes from her actual name, which is Penella, which is kind of close to my real name. Kind of make a reference to that. Uh, but Pen, the reason why I decided to call her pen is because i wanted her to write her own story as time goes on so that's the reason why i picked pen as the name and i sometimes play the character sometimes i don't i try to kind of get the lore from my like you know the lore from you know anything that i create kind of you know make it consistent as much as i can but also adding new fun things you know um you know that you know pens on this journey to you know know more about herself and everything and know more about people you know and stuff like mm. that so i feel like it's kind of blurring at times sometimes i stick to the character sometimes i don't but i think that's the fun thing about it is that i can uh put those two worlds together and make something different and new mm, okay so i've one of the things i hear a lot is vtuber lore how how do you build your vtuber lore and is your D D character involved with it and how do you introduce mm -hmm. new lore um, I think it's just the little jokes that happen, you know, like everyone has their, their inside jokes that they made in chat, like if something happens in a, like when they're playing a game or if they're like, you know, um, out there somewhere, people joke around like, uh, you know, I, I just sometimes brainstorm it, brain, brainstorm them, but sometimes it comes out of spontaneously. So like, uh, when I, a year after I became a VTuber, I made a voice pack for funsies. Um, and I basically kind of joked around that I like to watch uh, people sleep because in, in one of the things I talk about that because elves in D and D lore we don't really sleep that we meditate and stuff so, so I joked around that hey like I I, uh, I don't really sleep I watch people sleep because I can't sleep and um, one of my good friends that I uh, started hanging out with um, she'll like drink and stuff and like pass out here on VR chat and like. I I just be there watching her, make sure she's okay and everything. And it's funny because then I end up taking that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I watch people sleep for real. <laughs> uh, so I joke around. I'm like, it's real. I actually do it. It's real. Um, so things just kind of, you know, it happens where it's just like a, it happens. You just slap that in there and it works, you know. Lore, I feel like just is spontaneous. But if you can find something that kind of connects with something that has happened, it's kind of great that it kind of goes with it um and everything so yeah mm. so did you organically cre create the lore over time or did you have some starting out when you first started um, wanting to introduce it i yes i would say like i had something like i said like my basis was i was a D, &D like character that's you know um i took some of the lore of having this like pendant that i had like a butterfly pendant and that transported me to a different dimension this world and i came into a different world and from there because you know i want you know D, D is all about that journey that adventure that i was like okay she's just put into this place a different place and here she is uh let's see what happens kind of thing so it kind of organically grew like i said because of my name is you know just right as it goes you know the story just right as it goes so i tried to organically kind of make new things and um, I keep joking around that I meet other elves and they're like, oh my gosh, you're my lost brother and sister kind of thing. And we kind of joke around like that when I meet other el elves on the internet <laughs> and stuff. So, you know, it's more of growing that. Yeah. Okay. So now that we know you're, or, well, you've mentioned a few times you're a D&D &D player. What is your favorite funny D&D &D story? I got a few. I know I do. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. Um... One of the recent things that I joked about because I brought some of my D and D buddies, um, which I actually, funny enough, I met them by playing Outlast Trials. I met one of them, and they're like, "Oh, we should play more of that game together." And then when I got into their Discord server, and they're all 
no one I don't think there's anyone there that's a VTuber so I was like the VTuber in the group and so they were like hey you want to do a and d uh you know session and stuff and so um we started doing a one shot and I actually stream it every now and then I have some of the like you know clips and stuff or the vod sorry mm -hmm. in my youtube so it's there um but we did like one shot and we're gonna have one actually coming up soon on the 23rd i'm gonna try to stream that i had we were supposed to do that the last couple weeks ago but i got things came up and i couldn't do it but um one of my favorite things was because i took my friends over to vr chat uh we went to a world that had paddles and everything and I was very like into the paddle. I had that with me the whole time that night. Um, it was my friend's club. It was our first time hosting that club. And I was just there as a photographer, but I was just very like entranced by this paddle. And like, I did a joke with my friends like, hey, it'd be really funny if we had paddles and stuff in our session. And so uh, my DM, um, who was at the club with me that time was like, okay, bet. And so he, ended up having like whips and stuff and as weapons that i can get from like a store <laughs> so that was like the funny thing is we took that joke and put it into dnd was having like paddles or whatever and like one of the rings that I, um that i got that uh in that session was a dominatrix ring so oh <laughs> it's a running joke oh so yeah ah, very yeah. much so yes <laughs> I, I bet it is a running joke mm -hmm. <laughs> you know one of my favorite all-time dnd stories yeah. back from when i first started playing my the dm at the time was a bit of a a bit of a dick but also a lovable dick and we were going to raid a goblin camp at the time and we cleared out the camp we're down at the final boss and I was playing a fighter at the time. So me being the new D&D &D player, I decided I'm going to rush the door and just Spartan kick the door open. And I did. But the oh, boss no. had a color spray uh, prepared and I got hit and knocked out the whole rest of the fight. The door got opened, but I was done. <laughs> oh, no. That's crazy. No. I learned easily to not rush into a door. I always like because as a rogue i'm stealthy right mm. i always make sure that i listen i'm like okay i need my high perception my dexterity i always make sure that anything like that i'm like i can't rush into it so <laughs> dang it's, it is a hard lesson to learn when you start for sure oh yeah i definitely have the lesson but never stopped yeah. me from doing it more yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true Hmm. We love spontaneous stuff, right? You just, you know, just go with it. Go with the flow. <laughs> mm. Mm, indeed. So, was Pen the Elf your first D&D &D character? Do you ever remember the yes, first character very, you made? very first one, actually. Hmm. Um, one of, I think, again, another highlight that I remembered when I first, like, played with Pen. Um, we we were going against this gorilla thing and I was just saying like we were trying to do finishing blows on it and I joked that hey I have this rapier and stuff can I like attack on titan slash this like this gorilla and I was managed to do it with a really good like roll and I was like I was like yeah Pen is that like killer she like finish things off I was like the even though I was a rogue I was very like um what do you call it slash buckle no, I was that like very a melee. I wasn't gonna go over there and like kill things kind of thing. Mm. And so like I was that person, even though I've died, like very close to death. I mean, several times. Hmm. So I have a question for you. How does your DM handle player deaths? Because then everyone does it differently. I'm curious as how <laughs> how you how you're used to it. Wait, can you repeat that question again? Ooh. Sorry, I got how, distracted for a second. In the game you play as Pen the Elf. How did your DM handle mm -hmm. player deaths? Um, well, he was actually pretty forgiving. Um, at one, well, I, I don't use pen right now on my D and D session. Actually, there mm -hmm. is one currently I did use pen, but our it's off. Like, well, we haven't been able to have like a schedule and stuff. The current uh, mm -hmm. session that I have on right now is a different character. But when we handled it the first time, when I was almost close to death, uh, 
my DM had like a lot of mercy because he was like, it's your first character. I can't, you know, he was basically, he didn't want me to die. He was like, oh, no, I don't want, you know, it's your first character. I don't want you to die. So he had a lot of mercy with, with my character actually. Hmm. Um, so that's how he kind of handled it was like, hey, it's your first character. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to give you a hard time to make a new character kind of thing. Um, hmm. uh, it was pretty sad because that first campaign that I ever played Pen with, uh, you know, things happen where we couldn't, end the session and it was just me left and so i always said like i always said at the end of that like pen was the sur- only one that survived sadly out of the party that was how we kind of ended that campaign it was kind of sad but i was happy again to like use that character again i was able to use pen in the second campaign but currently that campaign has been like off the books for a long time we hadn't had time you know to do that session um and that's definitely again you you probably had the experience of like you can't have time to like finish the session or finish the campaign because of you know timing issues and schedules and Mm. you know you i very much know that much so i have another question for you based on vtubing now where does pen the elf the character begin and you and or end and you begin like where is the dividing line and how the two of you differ Hello, just real quick, I'll only take a few seconds of your time. In the description that way, you have a card, metaversedegion.card.co. We have many links down there for you to come come check out. We have a tw- we have an X link, which is with me. We have a Discord, where we hang out and do stuff all the time, as well as a Patreon link, where if you wish to support us, you can, where there's also a show and a pod- another podcast separate from Metaverse Degen, that which we have available to our wonderful members who signed up, such as Niche, Training Fangs, a leak woman, Forbidden Zero. Thank you all. You're all amazing. Enjoy the rest of your video. I won't take up any of your time. I think. Ah, oh, that's I'm trying to think where it begins and ends. I don't know. I feel like I. See... I feel like it kind of. I don't feel like it begins or ends. It's... I feel like I exist sometimes. <laughs> I just like I'm just here. I always say, as a joke, I always say, oh, I'm just here. I, you know, even my other friends say, oh, I just work here, you know, as a thing, as a joke. Um, I don't feel like there's a beginning or end. I'm just, you know, I feel like with my name, it's just, I'm an elf on the internet, really. That's how I kind of started. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good Sorry. to know. I got distracted. I heard, I heard my <laughs> brother's in a call, I think, so I'm like, I'm mm. like, okay. Through some of the VTubers you've interacted with, is that more of a commonplace mm-hmm. where it just kind of blurred lines between the two? Or are there some people who like play the character separate uh, from them? Or are there some like it's just some them? Some people, some people I feel like either blur it or they separate it. Like I have a friend who's, um, she's an actress turned, uh, well, she's an actress slash V singer. Um, mm. She specifically does like singing, but she also does acting as like another thing. Um, and her like persona kind of correlates with her, but she kind of tells the difference between it. Um, and she makes like that huge difference that, yeah, I'm an actress that became a VTuber kind of thing. Um, so like, again, some people do that, some people don't. I think it just depends on their branding, depends on their experience as a VTuber, um, and stuff like that, I feel like. like when people like you know they blur the lines some people do some people don't i think it just depends on their branding personality how they work okay so i have another question as well because we've only talked with a handful of vtubers personally so all of this stuff is new to Mm -hmm. at least me i from what i do understand there's like uh the corporate vtubers like with hololive and those companies and then independence Mm -hmm. is there a difference between the two groups yeah, there's a huge difference. Corporate definitely gets a lot more support financially than us. Um, a lot of us indies, when we first start, it's out of our own pocket and like support from our friends. Um, mm. Definitely, that's the biggest difference. Is they, I feel like the corporations have an established, um, you know, presence. Like you know, Niji Sanji, Hollow Live, uh, V Shoujo are the top three right now. I would mm. say the. Uh, People in the comments and everyone would say, Nichi Sanji, there's something happening. It's a dumpster fire <laughs> currently <laughs> in the company. There's a lot of things happening. But um, but we should say, like, we showed you that was really popping for sure. Um, but, but, like, those people, like, the people under those, like, a lot of them are already established content creators that kind of got into there and either became a new persona or got, you know, they 
ended up uh, expanding their personas in there. And the only difference is they just get more support and like they have teams behind them. A lot of us indies, um, I would say when we first start out, we don't have a team behind us. It's just a one man show where we kind of like, you know, do our own thing. Um, and over time, you know, people can help us, like I said, through other communities and other VTubers where we just help each other out and just like help each other grow. Um, mm. But that's like the biggest difference is corporations like, you know, they have strict rules, they they have to play a specific game, they have to get permissions from developers to play the specific game, and like they have a structure. A lot of us, we have some structure, but not as structuralized as corporate YouTubers, actually, I would say. Mm. Um, I feel like it's a little, little harder to put your foot in the door in the corporate side, because again, you have to be very established um, to get into that side of VTubing. Um, compared to indies um, but a lot of the indies uh, or sorry a lot of the corporate vtubers come become like were from indies before um and stuff and so like uh yeah that's the biggest difference is just they have a lot more support a lot more uh coverage compared to us where a lot of the indies are kind of like we're in our own little thing um unless we like again collaborate and everything like that but it's really hard to put your foot in the door and they have really strict like interviews they ask for audition tapes it's a whole thing i kind of correlate it with being a k-pop idol just because Mm -hmm. that's what i was very familiar with before um except for the fact that k-pop idols they have they're trained for years and years a lot of some of us just start streaming out of the blue like me and um Hmm. Yeah, it's like it's just the biggest difference is more structure, I guess. I hope that it was a lot. No, kind of helped. It, it helped a lot. It answered quite a bit. Um, once someone mm-hmm. breaks into the corporate sphere of VTubing, is there any crossover mm-hmm. or like once you step over, you have to kind of turn oh. away from where you came from? It depends. Depends on the company. V Shoujo mm-hmm. is a company like Iron Mouse used to be. Uh, she was just her own thing. She was Iron Mouse, but uh, you know, once she got the contract and everything, she, you know, still became Iron Mouse and like she keeps her IP, she keeps all her branding. Some people sometimes they have to to do graduation. I don't know if you heard of a VTuber graduation. Have you uh, heard of that term? I've heard the term, but I don't know what it is. So basically, like some VTubers, they kind of, well, it depends on like what happens. Usually, if, when people say they graduate, that's kind of like the end of that character's, like, uh, that pers- persona's, like, you know, I guess shelf life as a, on the internet, on like streaming or whatever. And um, I, I hope I am getting this right <laughs> on the definition, but this is just how I see it. Um, mm. Basically, it's the end of that persona's time on the internet and some people they uh when they graduate they do it either for personal reasons for you know any life reasons and some people do it where they have to do that because they're becoming a corporate vtuber um sometimes like uh let's see what's the best example that i can think of that people kind of talked about they talked about um if anyone remembers about the niji sanji thing that's happened we had you know uh, Selin Tatsuki go back, reverting back to her old persona that she used before she became Selin. We got Doki Bird, um, and then we also have uh, Pomu Rainpuff, who became like you know she went back to being Mint. Um, usually they call this forbidden knowledge, but usually people, um, when people have like their past personas versus their their current personas, people don't usually talk about that. It's mm. they call it forbidden knowledge, but sometimes like in some cases, like I just said, um, people just if they you know, can't keep the IP of their previous persona, they would revert back to their indie, like Doki Bird and, you know, Mint. Um, they would revert back to their old persona sometimes and because they can't keep their, you know, corporate side because that belongs to the company. Um, so mm. sometimes it's better to keep that persona, their indie persona sometimes, even though it's been graduated. Um, that's, I feel like, as a recent phenomenon. I've been watching a lot of videos about that where people have been more open on sometimes uh to bring up people's past personas sometimes it does uh affect um people's like you know their past personas affect their corporate personas sometimes so that's why they don't talk about it as much because of the scandals that kind of come up Mm. from it but uh usually it's i feel like it's slowly changing um over time with that whole like persona versus like their previous persona versus current persona Mm. and stuff 
Yeah. I kind of have another question based on that because I'm kind of curious because this phenomenon kind of is new to me now. So I just have a question is, yeah. yeah. I wonder how many of the VTubers who go back or like spend a lot of time in one persona and then go back to another. Mm-hmm. I wonder if any of the, I guess, lore stories or experience from one person who spent a time mm-hmm. in goes with them to the old one. Yeah. Like on, like on, on maybe on accident, I, maybe on purpose. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of them kind of do. Like Doki Bird is the biggest um, example as of, you know, recent this year. Uh, she actually, I think, ended up, if I'm correct, uh, she ended up taking her fandom's name, Dragoons, and ended up getting that back for her. Because for her, um, with her company, like, you know, the company she was previously at, didn't end well compared to her friend, um, you know, Mint, who was also from that same company, too. She, Mint got, you know, she ended up, like, just graduating normally, and, you know, it was very kind of, like, good terms compared to to Toki Bird. Hers didn't end up really well. Um, and so she ended up deciding to take some things and ending up, like, hey, I'm going to keep some things I want to keep in it. It's it's her kind of, and I don't want to say vengeance or like vendetta or anything, but like it was her kind of regaining back, like you know, something she, that was a big part of her, mm. getting it, getting it back for her. So it, I think it depends on who it is, and depending on like if the company allows them to get that stuff back, or more of like you know, that kind of things. Um, I know people in V Shoujo, the some of the V some of the Vishojo VTubers, um, they used to be in the other company and they switched to Vishojo and sometimes they make subtle references to their old personas sometimes. Um, but mm. it's like, again, we all, they just joke about it and stuff, you know? They kind of make subtle hints, but the thing is, they have NDAs that they can't break, you know? Mm. That they can't say, like, why this happened and everything. Um, and everything like that. So, you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It just depends. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So with you doing VR, now getting into VR chat and mm-hmm. having Penny off the VTuber, is there any crossover between those two worlds and the kind of content or events you do? Yeah, I would say yes. Again, especially with the raving part of it and becoming a host mm-hmm. for a club for a friend. It has been kind of overlapping, though I have been uh, focusing as of late more on... Um, the gaming side when i stream now i used to do a lot of vr before but now because i love to just be in here and just vibe sometimes i'm like i don't want to stream it but if it's something like a like a i did a beach collab with the waifu society a bunch of female vtubers only we did a beach collab and like they wanted a place for us to all collab and they said oh yeah vr chat is a great way and our friend uh I got to meet a lot of, a lot of women VTubers that also do VR chat, and it was kind of great to like talk about things that kind of overlap VTubing and VR chat. And it was really nice just to like get to know other people that are in that kind of same space and that overlap. Mm. Um, but yeah, really fun. Okay. We had bikinis and everything. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Having your own uh, beach episode, one would say. Like oh, yeah, typical anime yeah, beach episode. Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. You know, mm. yeah, it was fun. So, do you find yourself at, uh, like a Pen the Elf as like an anime character kind of idea, the way you kind of see your persona, may I ask? Or do you kind of see yourself as like a VTuber? Some, some, it, sometimes, but some, but not all the time, I would say. I feel like every now and then I'll like joke around, oh my, yeah, I'm an, and I'm an anime elf girl on here, but usually <laughs> not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, now that we're on the subject of anime, and you mentioned you're into it, I'd be it. I'd be a shame not to ask. What are some of your favorites? Ooh. So as of late, I've been really loving um, the uh, Delicious Dungeon, Delicious and Dun- Dungeon, of course, because it's like D and D related. I've mm. been love like I love watching like you know them making all the food and everything, and just you know again that journey of like they're trying to save one of their party members because it got eaten by a red dragon it's just that journey aspect of it and then the other one that i've been loving and i've been catching um like like collecting the uh, manga of his spy uh family i've been really loving it just because like i'm a family girl as you can see like my brothers are always with me Mm -hmm. 
um, even though my, fam my my parents are working a lot, but I'm a really family girl, and so like I was love to I just like to see that this unconventional family that you know just by fate you know work together even though they're kind of hiding their real identities and everything, and it kind of mm. kind of shows that like family isn't always about like blood relations. It could also be mm. through friends and everything, and I feel like that's how I felt like with a lot of people I've met on VR chat and also on VTubing is like a f the sense of f f family. And I think, again, that also I feel like stems from being Filipino too. Um, the, mm. you know, the whole concept that we have is called kapwa, which is like, you know, your own people and everything like that, own culture. And I feel like that kind of goes with that kind of aspect of that. So that's why I love spy family because of that aspect. Mm. I've I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna have to admit this, but I've only seen a few episodes of Spy Family. I haven't seen too far into it myself. <laughs> I would recommend it. There's like a cruise, air, uh, what is it? The they're on a boat, mm. like um episode kind of thing, and it oh so good. And Yor, we love her. We love Yor. <laughs> we love Yor. She's an assassin mom. You know I love her. Definitely one of my favorite characters. <laughs> we love badass like women that can fight. That's me. <laughs> mm. So I noticed something came up kind of related, but not really that I would like to inquire about. In in the real world, do you when you tell people what you do, what is some of the thought process around where you are? Like when when you tell them I'm a VTuber, do this any uh, anything people think of particularly? Is it kind of hard or easy? Do people get it? Mm -hmm. It depends. I remember when I was flying to Hawaii. I was talking to a bunch of like younger kids because I was I was flying to Hawaii to visit family. It was just me, mm. and I was a little nervous because I was like, "It's the first time I'm flying by myself somewhere," and I was just like, you know, chilling, vibing. And I saw some of them have anime stuff, so then I started talking to them, and I was like, "Hey, do you know what a VTuber is?" And then they're like, "Oh yeah, I've heard of them." And I was like, "Do you know?" And I was like, "Hey, I'm one." And they're like, "Oh, that's so cool." They're like, "I've never really v VTubers on like IRL and like stuff like that." And so I started talking to them about it. And sometimes it's easy, sometimes it isn't. Um, sometimes mm. I feel like I don't say depending on the situation, because um, I feel like some people don't understand that. Like, uh, I was talking to this person in church and stuff, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I stream part time." And they're like, what's streaming? And they did, they don't know what it is. So then I'm like, I, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to divulge into that whole like rabbit hole for them <laughs> instead. So I'm like, I'm just going to keep it that way. Because <laughs> then mm. it's a whole conversation to talk about and everything. And they're like, what do you get? What do you do in the internet? Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like there's sometimes mm. some misconceptions about, the, you know, different VTubers, especially, you know, we have the lewd VTubers and everything. And like, we have all those misconceptions and rumors about that. And I'm like... I'm like, uh, I'm not quite into that. No judgment, but like, you know, you know, they, they do you, I do me kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to get into that misconception or into that, like, you know, I don't want to be bundled in really quickly of like, oh my gosh, she does weird things on the internet. Yeah, it's true. But like, you know, we're done. it's not always that, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, well, yeah. I, I can sort of imagine how you feel about it in VR in VR chat or VR in general, it's kind of similar when there's a yeah. certain type of person here who like to do a certain type of activities mm -hmm. and everything they do mm -hmm. gets placed onto what you describe things as that's what some people think of first. Exactly. Get, oh, you, yeah. you're like that other person who did the thing. No, we're not like that person. <laughs> Is it similar over in the yes. VTubing community? <laughs> exactly. Mm. Exactly. Okay. How much does the different groups like the lube tubers, for example, how much do their things cross over to what you'd try and do? I feel like a lot of, well, they do a lot of gaming. It's just more of the context of what they are saying in chat. Sometimes mm. they're a little bit more like naughty on what they say and spicy. I try to keep it wholesome as much as possible for me. Uh, mm. Just because some people IRL know who I am. <laughs> so I try to keep it on the download, but as because, like I said, I blame this place. Uh, it hasn't been quite the same in the last few months um, that I started getting into this place. So uh, it, it's become a running joke on a lot of things. On like something like, Pen, what do you do on VR chat? I always see you on there like all the time. Like, that's why you haven't been streaming, huh? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. I just like this place too much. I'm sorry if you haven't been streaming. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. Okay. So 
are you proud of your 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 VTubing career? Is it something you want to talk about a lot of, or something uh, you kind of hide from? I am. Pr- I feel really proud about it actually, because I never thought I'd ever get to this point um, ever. So I'm pretty much proud of it. But like I said, depending on the situation, I don't talk about it as much. Mm. Um, yeah, I know some family knows I do, but sometimes I'm like. I, I, you know, sometimes I get a little scared. I'm like, oh yeah. Sometimes I say the one of some of the weirdest things that they don't think I would ever say, IRL. So like, I'm like, so I have to like be careful as much as I can. But at the same time, like, I'm like, who cares? Like, this is a character, you know. Sometimes I'm like, it's a character I play, or like, this is just me, you know. Um, mm-hmm. sometimes, but like, you know, sometimes I worry about that. Where like, I, I, I don't say it just because like people already have a a perception of me IRL that you know they're like oh she's so sweet and Mm. kind which is the same yeah but like they they know me more reserved and not like you know crazy sometimes and so like I worry about that because I'm like oh I don't want that to blend in sometimes it makes things a little awkward Mm. okay Um, but I try to be careful and I think that's why I picked to be a VTuber is because yeah there's that anonymity but at the same time you can still express yourself Okay. It's a weird line, a weird blur line kind of thing, I find. Mm. Um, and that's just based off of my experiences. I feel like a lot of people have different experiences, so, you know, hmm. yeah. I can understand having that alternative mask to wear where you can be a bit more free where no one will know you and you can let your hair down, one would say. Yes. Mm. Okay. So I have another question for you as well. Uh, how many terms are specific to the v- VTubing community? Can you tell us some of them what they are? Ooh. Okay, so I told you about Say So, which is, you know, wholesome and pure. i got to think about this. Um, my brain. <laughs> I have to think of other VTuber terms. What is another VTuber term? I have to really think about it. I wish I could bounce off with some people who know terms. Um, i got to think about it. Uh... Jeez, why can't I think about it right now? Maybe I have to look it up really quickly. There's a f- say so is one of them. Um, mm. Jeez, I can't. That's the only one I'm thinking. My brain ain't working today for some reason. I, there's a okay. lot of other terms. I just can't think of it at the moment unless I look really quickly. Oh, that's okay. You don't have to explain it if yeah. you do wish to. Sorry to put you in the spot. I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> I wish I was more prepared for that. Because um, I feel like, again, like everyone's experience with the VT community is very different. And sometimes mm. I'm, I want to be careful what I say and say, like, oh, this is my experience. It's all different for everybody. I don't want to generalize it um, and stuff. So that's why I'm like, oh, what's the other terms? I can't think of it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm trying to think. No, it's okay. <laughs> I have another question for you as well. When you're streaming and doing your uh, doing your thing on online, do you uh, do everything impromptu, or do you script anything, anything you want to say, or any certain actions, or anything like that? I just go with the flow. <laughs> um, sometimes I have an idea of like what games I want to play, and like be like, this is the order of it. Uh, if it's a collab, it's not as scripted, but it's structured. So like I'm. Mm. Like one, like this year, a few months ago, my friend taught me how to play Apex, and he had a structure of what he wanted to do. Um, but we, it wasn't totally like scripted as like what we were saying to each other. It was like, okay, Pen, this is the plan. What we're gonna learn, what you need to learn before you start streaming, um, this collab and stuff. And um, yeah, this is what you need to do. Make sure your game's working. Uh, you know how to do this. You got, uh, we've decided you're gonna play with the controller for this. Like, those kind of little things of, like, preparing. So it's not really as scripted, and I'm not a scripted person, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, as, you no know, problem I just go with what I'm thinking in my brain, and just, like, run with it. And I joke around that, um, I got this from my English, uh, hi- uh my high school English teacher, because he would say, I'm gonna teach you how to BS, basically. Mm. <laughs> That's what he was saying to us. Uh, kind of, but also like, you know, taking thoughts that we kind of had before and just go with it sometimes. Um, okay. And stuff, so, yeah. Alrighty. So, a couple final questions before we, we start to wrap up. One is, would you ever want mm-hmm. to become a corporate VTuber or do you want to stay indie? Ooh. I, I've had many thoughts happening before I grew 
to become one. I've auditioned a couple times, and uh, it's never gone past the audition, uh, like uh, the videos and stuff. I've never gone past that. Um, but where I am, I feel like for me, I'm I'm planning just to stick to becoming in, uh, like just being an indie for a while, like for a while now. Um, Mm. and stuff so i don't think i'll ever be a corporate unless something changes where an opportunity arise where they actually really want me on there um then i'll take that opportunity um mm. uh, but of course um a little about myself i actually am uh, irl i'm also a student i'm learning uh i'm actually studying to be a paralegal so oh. i do know somewhat about the laws and stuff learning about laws and so like I know f because especially as of now, like with all the VTubing things and like like I made the example of Doki Bird before, um, you know, to to read your contracts, to read your NDAs, to read all that stuff. And so I know that if I ever want to dip my toes in corporate VTubing, I definitely have to read the, the contract very well before I decide to do that. Um, mm. So for me... Right now, nor, cor nor cor corporate VTubing, but if I have the opportunity to do so and the contract looks good and, you know, it's it's good, I will take it if I could. So, okay. yeah, depends. Okay. That's that's the joke we make in the in the law in um the law stuff. They always say it depends, <laughs> mm. which makes sense. Pat depends as in pen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, joke okay. around that. And yeah. final question: If anyone wishes to get into what you do, what kind of advice would you give them starting out? Ooh, I would say find for yourself like a community of people. Get to know a bunch of people. Um, you know, you have to have that support system and encouragement first before you start, I find. Um, it's harder when it's just you starting out and you have no support system or people that would watch you because that would lead to you like kind of like feeling like, oh, I can't do this kind of thing and i would say the most important thing is get your support system get people that you know that can encourage you um when you start because that is the basic foundation communities are your basic foundation on like you know becoming a vtuber and i think or becoming a streamer in general i think um and so just find that support system find people that think like you people that you know you can trust and everything and I think from there, then you can get help to start um, and, you know, go on that journey of streaming. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, if the audience wishes to reach out and find you, where would they go to find you? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you can find me on uh, twitch.tv slash pen the elf. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is uh, actually based off of my K-pop era. So I never changed it, but it's uh, basically at e u n h a underscore cactus. Uh, you can find me there. It's still the same name, uh, Pen the Elf. Um, the name is actually O P Pen the Elf because I'm part of the stream team. Um, I'm one of, I think, two out of their VTubers. They just recently added a VTuber in the stream team. Thankfully, another elf. I was so happy. Uh, another Vroid elf. <laughs> Um, that joined and stuff. Uh, you can find me on that Twitter. I also have a TikTok that's also linked. But just if you find me on Twitch, you can find all my socials there and stuff like that. And also, so if you want to be friends on VR Chat, uh, it's just the same name, Pen the Elf. Uh, uh, you can see me on here either clubbing, hanging out, world hopping, and come say hi if you uh, have seen me on the podcast. I would love to, you know, get to know more people too. But yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. Well, I've just, I've just as much appreciate the opportunity coming here. It's nice to speak with someone from the VTubing community mm -hmm. who, who's, who's, who's into streaming more. So it's nice to get that viewpoints mm -hmm. of things. And I enjoyed learning from you yeah. where you yes. started and your D&D career. If you, yeah, like, if you like, I can recommend some other people that also stream and stuff. If you need more people to interview, I uh, mm. definitely you can, I can recommend some people too. Most yeah. definitely. We'd love to have them on. The yeah. more we could speak oh, yeah. to people, yes. the better. Mm, better indeed. off we are yes we are okay well with that said before i pass it around to do the thing i'm gonna pose a question to the audience if you've ever seen vtubers what was the first one that got you into watching to watching vtubers let us know in the comments below after you know the thing
Yeah, the thing that everybody enjoys the most and everything else like this, and hopefully she never takes this the wrong way. You might be on the internet, you might be here, but the pens is another form. If you get my age, you might have to wear them and, and look out because it gets the shits all the way down the line. We'll, we'll talk to you later, folks, and have a good one. Bye. You made me think of doozies adult diapers.